the end product of most systems or all systems is analysis so that we may be able to make good decisions based on the data that we have. What if the system has been in use for the last five years with over 50 users? So it means that the general ledger entries are really full. The bank account ledger entries are full because they have so many transactions. And at times when those systems are so big, it becomes tough to be able to do the right, um, okay, to fetch data. One way of solving the problem is by indexing, where which you looked at last week. Um, and by creating indexes, we are basically creating chapters for the book, which is our data, and it is easy to access a specific page in SQL Server because we have that particular um, indexed column, or rather we are creating a subset or a small table that is easier to be Okay, the query optimizer will search using that smaller table, making it faster for search operations. Um, but at times, uh, clients request vendors to um, to fetch their data using SQL. And uh, the uh, okay, the biggest ability with SQL is, of course, SQL is faster in terms of fetching data and the ability to query. Uh, filter based on a date, based on whichever uh, parameter that you'd like, which is not maybe, um, maybe it could be taking more time on the client side because of the machine that they could be using or the data is too big for to be handled by their, uh, the memory that they have. But what else can we provide to the clients uh, that can help them in filtering or f analyzing the data. So web services, basically, we know them, they co connect two applications. Uh, we, we, one application could be Business Central and the other uh, Excel. We can use the ability of web, web services to be able to filter the data and that is all data because all data is the sql for the web and being named as the sql for the web it means that it gives us that ability of the sql like feeling of having uh being able to filter data as we fetch it okay where am i so let me look at let's look at this um we are having query options here for our data. What kind of ability does it give us? For example, filtering. Before that, when we publish our page, I have chosen to use the general ledger entries, which is page 20. How do you go about publishing? Search for web services. I believe you do have the permission after you have gone to the web services page, click on new. All pages aren't exposed by default. You need to specifically expose the page. Anyway, I'm exposing this page, general ledger entries. It's not a page that is commonly exposed because of it exposes all your entries, but at times it might need to be exposed because it is still permission-based for you to be able to access. So let's be careful with which pages we are exposing at the same time. So I have exposed, which is page number 20. It will populate the object name. And uh, I will say that this is the general ledger entries, which after I publish, OK, it's loading. So once I publish, it will create two URLs, the or data and the simple object access protocol or the SOAP URL. This is being deprecated, so let's focus on using or data as of now because this is the standard that will be used henceforth. Um, okay, I've clicked on the URL at the, and it has opened. This is a Docker local installation that I'm using. So in your case, 
it will prompt you to enter the username and the password. So once you have done that, you'll get this particular URL for the page. And here it is. So the URL is here. You can still copy it from this side. You can copy the link address from this side or access it directly. Access this link. We look at both options, how to access the same in the online business central versus the offline. So you're starting with the Docker container. OK, once <coughs> you have this URL copied, we, we'd like to test a few query options uh, for our BC here while fetching. How can we filter to be able to get the data? So all these options, we have filter, select, order by, count, top, skip, and expand. Most of them, or all of them, do have the prefix of the dollar character. Be keen about this. There is a prefix, and the notation is the query string. Query string is where you append the question mark sign, and then you enter your query string that will now filter to your specific query that you'd like. <clears throat> so in all the ways of doing things, if we wanted, if we had several products, we could fetch a product, and then we fetch a product by ID, we fetch a product by name, so we could have maybe three or four APIs for the same functionality. But in this case here, we are only having uh, this product, and then we are appending our specific filter, so it gives an SQL-like and an easier option for us to be able to get our data. Little talk now. Let's go to Excel. Once you open your Excel, just click on the data and then get data. And then uh, I'd like us to use the or data source. We can either get it from the database and all this, but from other sources, we do have the option of from an all data feed, and we'll paste our URL and be able to fetch. So I'll cancel first so that I can uh, remove the data source settings that have been set here so that we can be able, except for this API one, I don't want to log in again for that, but uh, for this case, you'll be using the organization account. Let me clear so that we can see from a scratch point of view how the access will be. So get data again from other data sources. Then we select the from or data feed. I'll paste the URL that I'd copied in the or data v4 URL link. And then I'll click OK. So we couldn't authenticate with the credentials provided. So for the Business Central online, you'll use the organization account. And when you sign in, it will prompt you to enter the Microsoft credentials that you use to access uh, the online version of BC. Because this URL will also be different. It will be the online URL. But for me, I'm just using the basic because um, for this example, on the online one is already connected. So once I test with the online, it will automatically populate. You enter your username and the password for the basic or for the data that you'd like to fetch. And this is a preview. Um, so the, da the data in preview has been truncated. It's not showing everything. but. This is how it will be. We do have an entry number, posting date, document type, document number. These are the fields that have been exposed in the general ledger entry table. I'll just load the data. OK, once I load, I think we are able to see this data. And this is. The beauty is you can be able to refresh at any time in case there's a new entry, it will be populated automatically. So this is 2,882. If we add a new entry, once we refresh, it will be added. Okay. So I'd like to maybe filter, let me say, 
this entry number extraordinary extraordinary expenses let me edit this data source so that i can get a specific entry and here is how we do it we append the query string and we say that we will filter the, with the dollar sign filter then is equals to now the field is entry number remember the field name here is the key name in our json okay it, it this is the key name we use the key name here and okay it could be the entry number posting the document type and all that so i'll have that as the entry number is equals to 1522 where are we so we expect the data to load only one entry. So this is for a case where you do have so many records. It could be a date range, but for now let's use this. Or maybe a date greater than or equal to, yeah, something of the sort. So entry number, okay, sorry, this is mistake, equals to. So this is the sign that you're using. Entry number equals to 1522. Close and load. You're loading the data. So it has truncated the data to one entry. Remember Excel has a limit of maybe, or it's, it, it's 1 million and 48,000, I don't know. It's, there's that limit in which Excel can analyze. So in a case where it's a very big table with over, okay, over 1 million entries, and you only want to analyze entries maybe from a posting date, a specific posting date, this is how you can be able to filter. This is one example of filtering with the entry number. We can filter with the posting date. We can filter with the amount, maybe. can change that filter. I can say the amount is greater than maybe 10,000. Let me try that. So I'll uh, edit again. I'll edit my query and I'll add I'll append my filter and say that my amount amount is so greater than 10k then I close it again and load so this one will also be filtering any amount that is less out we see we only have triple three rows uh, loaded all the others the amount is less than that 10k and we can see yes our filter is here we have all the data and we are able to filter based on those uh, conditions that are there okay let me use the business central online sandbox and i'd like to fetch the vendors this is it the vendors okay, these are the customers let me try items. We still follow the same procedure, web services, and then we load. Okay, here we are, web services. We enter our new entry. The page will be items, item list. So this is the items page and uh, we publish it and we'll have access to the link. The link is what you're interested in. Once we have the link, we will uh, basically, okay, <laughs> be able to go to data and then get data. Remember uh, my sandbox had already been connected. As I had shown you, you'll use the organization login for you to be able to access the online version so from other source which will be the or data feed and then i'll paste i'll paste my link here so it will authenticate automatically because it's already linked i've already logged on to my organization link or my organization account okay so it's invalid 
I think I just need to log in again. API.businessrental.com. Let me go to advanced. So this one is forcing me to re-log in. Oh, there is no there is no data source connected to not data source settings. Let me get data again from a new entry. Because this one is already connected to the other offline one. Let us see, yeah, there it is. Because it was trying to authenticate with the old the the other file that you already have connected. And still the same here on this side, we can still filter with the item number, with the inventory, with the non-stock. I'll I'll share a link for more details on how to filter or even to add uh to expand to add another new data item to this list and all, and all that. So this data can be loaded and it can be analyzed using a pivot table once it has been loaded. So it's automatically loaded from this side. And here we do have our 20 rows loaded. So that's it for this video. And it shows the ability that Odata has in enabling us to filter data that is uh, from the system and present it in a way that is um, OK filter and analyzing especially for big systems if we create a query that has filtered data to a specific uh, limit it will enable users easily analyze and they'll be they load from this side and it will make uh, their work much much easier so that's it for this video i will see you in the next video if you enjoyed this video make sure to like subscribe and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss the next one.